Hello and welcome to Otten Math. In this edition of Otten Math, we're going to talk about graphing and writing equations of ellipses. Before we get started, let's review the formula for the midpoint, or finding a midpoint. You're going to need that uh, in some of your calculations for finding the center or the foci uh, of an ellipse. Right, so the midpoint formula is just uh, taking two coordinates, we'll say x1, y1, or coordinate 1, and y1, y2, I'm sorry, x1, y1 from 1, and x2, y2 from coordinate 2, and then taking the average of the x values for the coordinate, so x1 plus x2 over 2, and then the average of the y values for the coordinate, y1 plus y2 over 2. So in this case, I have uh, two coordinates, negative 3, negative 4, and 4, 4. It doesn't really matter which one is 1 or which one is 2, but I've just identified the coordinate negative 3, negative 4 as 1, and the coordinate 4, 4 as 2. And then I take the average of the values. So the first uh, value that I get for the x value for the coordinate is negative 3 plus 4 over 2, which gives me 1 half. And then the second coordinate, or the second value for the coordinate is going to be the y values added and then divided by 2, or the average of the y values. 4 plus negative 4 divided by 2 which gives me 0 over 2, which is 0. So the midpoint between 1 and 2 is going to be 1 half 0. So again, the midpoint takes the average of the x values and the average of the y values, and that gives me the coordinate for the midpoint. All right, so let's talk about the definition of an ellipse. So the ellipse is a set of all points such that the sum of the distances from the foci, and here I identify the two foci, uh, is going to be constant. So again, set of all points such that the sum of the distances from the foci and any point on the ellipse is going to be constant. Now we recall uh, we've talked about circles and also we've talked about parabolas. The definition of a circle is a set of all points that are equidistant from a fixed point called the center. All right, so if this were a circle, um, all the, and it's not, we'd have a circle which would be uh, equidistant, or all points in the circle would be equidistant from the center and that distance we call the radius. For a parabola, uh, a parabola is defined as uh, the set of all points such that uh, each point is going to be equidistant from the focus. There's only going to be one focus in a uh, parabola and the directrix, which is a line. So if you want more information about parabolas and circles, uh, you can go back and revisit those two videos. So again, ellipse is a set of all points such that the sum of the distances from the foci and any point on the ellipse is going to be constant. So here I have a point on the ellipse, distance 1 from foci 1 and distance 2 from foci 2. Added together, the sum is going to be the same as the sum of the distance to this point in black uh, from foci 1 and foci 2, or focus 1 and focus 2. Okay, so let's move on and let's talk about some components of the ellipse. So the ellipse has two foci. Uh, a major axis, a minor axis, a center, vertices, and covertices. So the vertex of the vertices are going to be along uh, the elongated portion of the ellipse, and they're going to be on the major axis. So you can see we have something that looks like a, an oval or a football or an egg. So the elongated portion is a longer portion of the ellipse. The vertices are going to be the endpoints of the tips of uh, the ellipse, the elongated portion or the major axis. The minor axis runs through the center of the ellipse such that it splits apart um, or goes through the narrower portion of the ellipse. And then the covertices are located at the tips of the minor axis. Center is the intersection of the two axes, and the foci are going to be along the major axis. So we'll go through each of those in a little bit more detail. All right, so the major axis is the segment that runs through the elongated portion of the ellipse and intersects the vertices and the foci. Remember, the major axis divides the ellipse into two symmetrical halves. And there are two ways we can do that, one with a major axis and the other with a minor axis. Now remember that the foci are always going to be on the major axis and not on the minor axis. And remember again that the definition of ellipse is a set of all points such that the sum uh, of the distances to any point from the two foci is going to be the same as it is from any other point. All right, so the major axis can be either uh, horizontal or vertical depending on the orientation of the ellipse. Uh, we can rotate this ellipse 
in any way that we want to make it either horizontal or vertical. So I can make it a horizontal major axis or a vertical major axis depending on which way the orientation fits. So the major axis is not always horizontal and it's not always vertical. It depends on the orientation of the ellipse. All right, so the vertices, we talked about the foci, we talked about the major axis. Now the vertices are located at the tips of the elongated portion of the ellipse. And again, the foci are the two points inside of the ellipse which determine its shape. All right, the center is the midpoint of the vertices and the co-vertices. So uh, again, we were talking about midpoint at the beginning of the discussion. So if I were to ask you to find the center, you could find the midpoint between two points, uh, which are the vertices, you'd be able to find the coordinates for the center. It's also the point of intersection between the major and minor axes. So if you had the equation for the major axis and the minor axis, you'd be able to figure out uh, where the center is. All right, the minor axis is a segment that crosses the narrow portion of the ellipse and runs through the co-vertices and the center. Here is the minor axis. In red, again, the major axis is in uh, blue. And remember, again, the foci are not on the minor axis. Uh, co-vertices are going to be at the tips of the narrow section of the ellipse. They are on the minor axis. And again, the center is the midpoint of the co-vertices uh, and the vertices. Okay, so just in summary, and you can write these down if you want. I, you can pause it. I'm not going to uh, re uh, rediscuss these concepts. I've already gone through them graphically and verbally, but if you want to pause and write these down, you're more than welcome to. I have one more page to give to you, so I'm going to move on to that page. So these are just some of the basics of an ellipse that we've reviewed. Okay, so now we're going to talk about equations for ellipse. Now, there are two different equations that we have. One is with an uh, ellipse with a horizontal major axis, and the other is with an ellipse with a vertical major axis. And really, the only difference between the two is uh, where the x minus h squared value is and where the y minus k squared value is. Um, x minus h squared value is always over the a squared value uh, when you have a horizontal major axis and the y minus k squared value is over the b squared axis with a horizontal major axis. And with a vertical major axis, we now rotate the two. So before with a horizontal major axis, uh, x minus h squared was on this side, and y minus k squared was on this side, and now we've flipped those for the vertical major axis. So let's talk about the equation and the components of the equation. Now, uh, with the equation for ellipse, we have some value. You want to always set it equal to 1. Now, you might get some problem that has a value of uh, some value greater than 1. And ultimately, what you'll want to do is you want to divide both sides by that value in order to get them to be equal to 1. So let's say if I had this value equal to 4, I would divide both sides by 4 such that ultimately I would have a value uh, in the form that equals 1. So you always want 1 to be on the right-hand side. That's what your ellipse is going to equal. So hk is the center of the ellipse. Now be careful again, we've gone through this. If I write x minus 3 squared plus y minus 2, or well, let's say plus 2 squared, and I put that over a squared and b squared, then my center is going to be 3, negative 2, not negative 3, negative 2. So hk is the value, and you have to understand that the formula is written such that if you have hk in your value, it's going to be x minus that h value plus y minus the k value. All right, so the hk value is the center of the ellipse. And then a is the distance from the center along the major axis to the vertices. So a plus or minus a from the center will give you, along the major axis, will give you the coordinates for the vertices. Uh, B is going to be the distance from the center uh, to the co-vertices along the minor uh, axis. So here's your B value, here's your A value. A value determines the vertices, B value determines the co-vertices. Now if you were given an equation, something like uh, x minus 3 squared over uh, 36 plus y minus 2 squared over 64, uh, you might uh, initially think that your a value is going to be 
uh, 6 and your B value is 8. But you have to think about the ellipse graphically. The A value is always going to be greater than the B value because the vertices are going to be on the elongated portion of the ellipse. So the A value is going to be longer than the B value because the distance from the center to the vertices is going to be longer or greater than the distance from the center to the covertices. All right, so in this case, we would want to rewrite the equation to move these terms uh, around so that now y minus 2 squared was in front uh, as the first term and x minus 3 squared was second. And then we define our a squared value as 64. So the a squared value is always going to be greater than the b squared value. And now our a value would be 8, the square root of 64, and our b value would be 6 in this case. Okay, moving on, uh, we're going to talk about a vertical major axis. Now here's the equation. Uh, again, we've just uh, flipped y minus k squared and x minus h squared. a plus b stays the same, and this equation is still equal to 1. So the equation for a vertical uh, major axis is listed accordingly. Now the a values represent the vertices, and they're on the elongated portion. But now you have to move vertically to find them uh, rather than horizontally since you're moving along the major axis. All right, so in, this is, again, review. So the term with the largest denominator is a first term in the expression of the ellipse. So we talked about that before. Um, if I had uh, 7 squared uh, greater than 3 squared, which I do in this case, I know that uh, the x minus h component goes first, uh, and the y minus k component goes second. These are equal to 1, of course. And this designates a horizontal major axis. So you take a look at the denominator that has the largest value, then you look at the variable that's in the numerator with the denominator that has the largest value. And that is going to be your reference point for whether or not it's a vertical or horizontal major axis. If it's an x value, it's a horizontal major axis. If it's a y value, it's going to be a vertical major axis. All right, so let's take on one problem real quickly. And I'm going to ask you and then give you the, uh, the values after you go through the problem. So here's an example. Uh, I want you to find or tell me what the horizontal, uh, uh, what the major axis is, what the minor axis is, what the A and B values are for this particular ellipse. Now I'm going to pause it here and then come back. All right, so in this case, <clears throat> I look at my equation. It looks like the graph by the midpoint is centered at 0, 0. So I have x minus 0 squared plus y minus 0 squared is equal to 1. I identify that this is going to be a horizontal major axis, so x, uh, x squared is going to be the first term. My a squared that goes underneath that is going to be the distance from the center to the vertices, which is going to be 5 units, so 5 squared gives me 25. The b value is the distance from the center to the covertices. That distance is going to be 3. 3 squared is 9. All right, so that's just basics of graphing and writing equations of ellipses. Please come back and join us when we talk about a uh, more detailed uh, process of graphing and writing ellipses in the next edition of Otten Math.